Big Mike in the 110th Apple Cup. Washington State in Washington. And it is senior day here at Husky Stadium. That's going on right now for this senior class that has never dropped the game to its in-state rival. Four consecutive wins for Washington over Wazoo. Top 20 matchup this time around and a lot at stake. If Washington State wins, they head to their first Pac-12 championship game. Washington, meanwhile, with a win would put Stanford into next Friday's matchup with USC. With that, we say welcome inside. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman joins us in a moment. Been playing this game a long time, back to 1900. This is only the seventh time both teams have been ranked. It's about as good as it gets for this rivalry right here. There's no doubt about it. And for Washington State, you saw what's on the line for them in regards to the Pac-12, but it's also the fact that this is a Washington State team that doesn't have a player on the roster that's beaten Washington. I think they'd like to end tonight on a different note. And for Washington, they haven't had back-to-back 10-win -back seasons since over 25 years ago and besides that when you're a senior you're playing at home for your final game you don't want to end on a loss so for really a lot on the line for both teams and we get a chance tonight Brady to see two of the nation's best quarterbacks that start off with Luke Falk Washington State's quarterback who is the all-time leading passer in this conference to me it comes down to the three T's for Luke Falk as far as what makes him so effective the first is touch he's got an uncanny ability to throw the football into windows that most quarterbacks in college football don't have the ability to do the next part is the timing. He's been in this offense for a long time. He's got a great feel when his wide receivers are coming out of their routes. The ball's there on time, on the money. And finally, it comes down to his toughness. Luke Falk's got a lot of grit. He's been sacked more than any quarterback in the Pac-12, but he continues to deliver. He gets up after those tough hits, and he still finds ways of being productive. On the other side, it's Jake Browning, who has not duplicated the numbers from his Pac-12 Player of the Year campaign last year, but he's still one of the nation's best. Yeah, and part of that's been the fact that John Ross has left. He's gone to the NFL. Dante Pettis has taken over, but really it's their loss on the offensive line. Left tackle Trey Adams. Some of it's been him trying to scramble because of the pressure that he's had, and he's still accurate even outside the pocket. You can see this in the final moments of their win over Utah, but some of it's by design as well. This is the first play of their game, and you can see they want to move him out Outside the pocket where he's a little more safe, but he still has that pinpoint accuracy, the back shoulder to Pettis for the big game. Won't be easy for either of those guys because these are the top two defenses in the Pac-12. That's nothing new for Washington. For Washington State, though, this is a new thing playing some defense as we send it down to Bruce. Joe, when Michael Leach hired Alex Grinch to be his defensive coordinator, nobody knew anything about him. Grinch said that's kind of an advantage, he said, because you get to set the bar, you get to do what you want to do. And what he does in his M.O. is a lot of speed and a lot of pre-snap movement. He said it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and giving people the impression that they're doing a lot more than they do, and that's a great equalizer. And that's why they have the best defense Mike Leach has had since he's been a head coach. The big thing for him, though, is Washington does a lot of pre-snap movement, too. And he said that's gotten the best of us the last couple of times. And it's very easy to get vanilla when you face this Washington team. And he goes, that's a me problem. I got to do what we do and what makes us really good. And I got to remember to stay aggressive. The Cougars one win away from a trip to the Pac-12 championship game. It's the 110th meeting in a series that goes back to 1900. And it's only the seventh time both teams have been ranked first time back-to-back -back seasons they've both been ranked lately Washington's dominated winning four in a row and seven of the last eight uh, tonight with the rain falling and the temperature in the high 40s Washington State won the toss deferred to the second half and so the Huskies will have it to start Savan Ahmed the freshman back to return Eric Powell's kick And off we go from Seattle. Ahmed thought about it, then took a knee. And so Washington will start at the 25-yard line. They've been slowed by some key injuries, but still number two in the Pac-12, averaging 37 points per game. And we talked about Jake Browning off of the top. Numbers not quite what they were, but still been a really good season. Well, it's hard to meet up to that standard that he set last year. He talked about it in the open. John Ross from the first round pick he's no longer here anymore Dante Pettis has stepped in his place but it's really been the second wide receiver that's been the struggle 
for Washington. And not so much due to production, due to injury. A number of guys really stepped up, whether it was Quinton Pounds or tight end Hunter Bryant. And those guys went down with injuries. So all of a sudden, the passing game didn't quite look the same. They lost Chico McClatcher as well. He lost, lost his left tackle in Trey Adams. And starting this one from the 25 yard line with a LeVon Coleman run. One of the two running backs that'll see time for the dogs with Miles Gaskin as well. Coleman getting the start on his senior night and a gain of six. I suspect you're going to see a heavy dose of run from Washington for a couple of reasons. You heard Bruce Feldman talk about how much this Washington State defensive front likes to move around before the snap, literally after the snap. Kind of slow that down. Running the football helps eliminate some of that. Gaskin in now, and you see some of that pre snap movement from the Cougars. Gaskin downhill with a seam and a first down to the 48. Back to back running plays to start for Washington. This one breaks for 17. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Watch as they slant. Look at the seam that's created on the right side. And that's exactly the danger that you put yourself in when you're a defense that likes to move at the snap of the football. If you don't have sound run gap integrity, all of a sudden you can open up some big seams. Coleman back in for Gaskin. On first down from the 48, Browning's first throw of the day. At least the first pass play called. He'll tuck it and get pounded after a gain of five or six by Isaac Dotson. Boy, he's uh, he's taken some hits the last couple of weeks, huh? Yeah, he's had to. And again, he's been more mobile. The protection hasn't been quite the same as what it was when Trey Adams, their left tackle, is in the game. Some of the criticism, too, has been he's maybe held on to the football too long. But again, the explanation, besides Dante Pettis, they haven't really found that second option in the passing game to get separation. Jake Brown is going to try to make a play when he has the opportunity to do so. Gaskin spins off initial contact, finishes forward for a short game. Turned a loss into a gain of two, setting up third and short on Washington's first drive. You see the counter to why you like to slant or have games if you're a defense. It confuses the offensive linemen. They have to adjust at the snap of the football as far as who their assignment is. Now you see this wildcat formation with Miles Gaskin. Running behind Coleman, Miles Gaskin fighting his way for a first down. Second effort got it for him. Washington converts its first third down of the night. Watch the penetration from Hercules Mata'afa. He's going to get through, but not able to get to Gaskin in time. He's so quick off the ball. He's not the biggest. He's only 6'2", 250 pounds, but talking with the coaching staff before, they said when he goes up against those 300-pound offensive linemen, it never enters his mind how much smaller he is than the guys he's going up against. One of the leading candidates for Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. They stick in the Wildcat. Gaskin again breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and manages a yard and a half with Jihad Woods making the stop for Washington State. Nick Begg, he got in the backfield, kind of all of a sudden started Gaskin or made him stop his feet and have to cut it back up. Offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith for Washington likes to throw in a big mix of things on his first drive. We see Wildcat, we see a mixture of personnel groupings. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense to adjust. Browning's back in, more traditional set for second and nine. Quickly outside they go. Savan Ahmed, the freshman, dragging a defender to the 30 with a first down. This is the sort of play design that you love if you're a quarterback. An easy completion, but look at the two tight ends out in space. Two big bodies now leading the way for Ahmed. Easy completion, easy yards after the catch. Right here in Kirkland, Washington. One of the many kids playing in this game that grew up in this rivalry. It means so much to so many. 110th time these teams have faced off. On first down from the 30, here's Gaskin again. Bounces to the outside. Now cuts it against the grain. And Miles Gaskin, who has three consecutive 1,000 yard seasons. As a dozen and a Washington first down. Well, this is one of the things that makes Gaskin so special. Freezer right there. 
Look at this space. He's got the vision to be able to see the backside cut and pick up the additional yards. You know, the majority of his yards come outside the tackles, but for as small as he is, he's tough to see once he gets back behind that big offensive line, and all of a sudden he pops out. He's incredibly difficult to tackle in space. And he's got such great vision. If there is a hole, he's going to find it. Browning off play action, finds Pettis, his first catch of the day. Dante Pettis, you, know, you talk about the question being who's the number two for Washington. There is no doubt who number one is. No, and you see one of the reasons that makes him so special is he's good on the double move routes, the big plays. We all know about him as a special teams return man, but it's the tough catches, the ones across the middle, like on the last play. He doesn't mind taking the hit and making the tough catch. Right now, this drive for Washington, they've got everything going. If you're Washington State, you've got to do something to stop the bleeding. It's been the 10th play of this opening drive. They gave him enough for a first down. So first and goal from the seventh. Fake to Coleman. Browning steps up. Flips it forward to a crossing. Pettis who's popped out of the two. Isaac Dotson stopped him second and goal. Jake, Jake Browning, there is no spot yet that he's been better than down here. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, if you talk about taking care of the football, zero interceptions in his career. I mean, you're giving yourself the opportunity to always come away with points. That's something that's just invaluable to any head coach. We talked to Chris Peterson about Jake Browning. He, he loves this young man, but it's the decision making, I think, that makes him so special. You know, oddly, last week in that comeback win against Utah, they had to settle for a couple of field goal attempts when they got down here. Second and goal, here comes Gaskin for a Washington touchdown. 11 play drive to start the score in Seattle. His 16th touchdown of the season. And that was just physical domination by the Washington offensive line against the Washington State defensive line. Tristan Vizcano, who had a missed extra point last week before the game winner, adds this one and a 7 nothing lead for Washington as Miles Gaskin gets his score record 40th touchdown of the year. Washington State's aerial attack takes the field after this. You talked about Jonathan Smith liking to show a little bit of everything on his opening drive. He had ample opportunity there. 11 plays, 75 yards to get in the end zone. Well, another thing is time of possession. It up six minutes on that drive, and pretty significant when you think about the fact that that's more of Washington State's game. Right. You lead the Pac-12 in time of possessions for a prolific passing offense. You don't think about them taking up a lot of time on the clock, but Washington obviously trying to shorten the game and limit the amount of opportunities who fall gets with the football. James Williams back to return Vizcano's kick. And Washington State will start at the 25-yard line. The number three passing offense in the country. Luke Falk, the Pac-12's all-time leading passer. I think the biggest thing that stands out about Luke Falk, we talked about his toughness, his touch, his timing. It's how he spreads the football around as well. I mean, he really does operate this system within Mike Leach's air raid offense as good as any quarterback that's probably played in the system. Eight players with 20 or more receptions. That's the most in the country. You know, most teams talk about balance run pass. Mike Leach looks at it as parts of the field and different guys involved in the passing attack. And for a relatively inexperienced group, and you talk about what they had returning from last year. Lost Gabe Marks, Lost River Craycraft, Robert Lewis down with an injury in preseason camp. A lot of targets have emerged. They shovel it off to James Williams. And Williams stays on his feet and crosses the 45. The sophomore from Burbank, California, goes for 22. You only got three defensive linemen. They're dropping eight in coverage, which allows them to find the seam for the shovel pass and really allows you to set up blocking on the second level downfield. And then it's just Williams the rest of the way, keeping his feet and running tough. Underneath Kyle Sweet, 
Driven down by Keyshawn Bieria after six, second and four. That's a staple of any Mike Leach offense, any air raid offense. You're going to see a lot of shallow crossers. Easy completions for the quarterbacks. A lot of times there will be a mesh, meaning they'll be able to run one another off versus man-to-man -man coverage. Here's Morrow with a big hole and a first down. Jamal Morrow, team captain. More than 4,000 all-purpose yards in his career. And really, when you put together the few running backs that they use, it's a productive group. Yeah, and look, this is always going to be a pass-first offense. They run just enough to keep you on your heels. They don't allow you to kind of go to tee off with them on their tendencies. And when you've got an, a defensive line that's able to rush up field like Washington can, it's going to create some scenes when they run the draws, which is very effective. Williams back in on first down. Falk all day, but the coverage downfield leads to a sack for the freshman. Levi Onzerike. It's already the third Washington sack of the night. And this is once again a coverage sack. There's nowhere to throw the football. Washington State runs somewhat of a simple offense, meaning they run the same play over and over and over again, and they just expect to out-execute you Washington's got a beat on everything Washington State's been trying to do so far in the passing game in this first quarter. Second and 20. Again, they drop eight into coverage. Falk letting it fly into coverage and picked off. JoJo McIntosh headed the other way. And the dogs will have it in Washington State territory. Bad things happen for Washington State when Luke Falk holds on to the football too long. And JoJo McIntosh was reading his eyes the entire way. The defense shifted to play more of what's called a three cloud, meaning you've got three defenders responsible for deep thirds, and then you've got guys who are responsible for the corner flat. There's really nowhere to throw this football, and you can't miss over the top in that case. This has been what's plagued Washington State throughout the course of the last three matchup between these two teams is the turnovers and giving Washington State, or excuse me, giving Washington good field position and the momentum. See what the dogs do with it with the first down from the 45. Gaskin pulled down at the line of scrimmage by Frankie Louvu. And Washington State's first quarter struggles in the Apple Cup continuing. Now the last five plus years getting outscored 52 to nine in the first quarter and like you mentioned that is no touchdowns under Mike Leach in the first quarter against Washington. Well, it's been a decade in this matchup since they've scored a touchdown here in Seattle. Alex Brink to first neck for a 41 yard touchdown 10 years ago. I mean it's, it's ridiculous to think that they've just had slow starts time and time again. In seconds of this opening quarter. Outside they go, Bocelli, who's got a run down the sideline, but a flag down. This is coming back. Bocelli tackled to the five. But this will come back. Braden Lenius with a block on the edge, and they've got a little too much of the shirt. Washington loves putting those bigger bodies on the outside to help kind of lead block on their screens. Holding. Offense number 81, 10-yard penalty, second down. Right here, and he's just going to try to take two. And unfortunately, he's got kind of extended there, and maybe they feel like it exposed that hand grabbing onto the jersey. It's tough to tell from this angle. I thought he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Where was Marcellus Pippins going? In that case, again, you're just trying to kind of create leverage, meaning one guy for the outside, one guy for the inside, but I'm not sure exactly what he saw that made him cut like that. It wipes away a 36-yard gain and brings his first quarter to a close. The 110th meeting in a series that goes back to 1900. Washington trying to play spoiler as Washington State has its sights set on the Pac-12 championship.
during the break they honored Bob Rondo's broadcast in his final game as voice of the Huskies today 37 years in that role and it is officially by proclamation Bob Rondo day in Seattle today congratulations to Bob on a fantastic career announcing his final Apple Cup today Second quarter begins with a second and 18 for Washington, and this is a free play for Jake Browning. Throwing back shoulder for the freshman Ty Jones, who's got it across the 45. Defense number 51. That penalty's declined. Result of the play. Third down. When you look at who they target the most on third down, it's Dante Pettis, and then it's actually the running backs. LeVon Coleman's in that mix. He's out as well. And then Miles Gaskin. So someone's going to have to step up. See what they go to on third down here. Yeah, especially last week. Miles Gaskin was huge in the pass game. What a 76 yard touchdown. Doubled his season total receiving. Cougars bring heat. Browning throws too tall for Jones with a coverage from Harper. And again, the crop puts a flag, and again, they won't get it. Fourth down. Just a simple stop route. Here's the matchup. Watch Sean Harper. We saw earlier in the game a lot of tugging and pulling going on. Throw a little bit high. That's the toughest thing for Jake Browning is he's got to adapt. What do you think is quick kick? They've been known to do this before. Yeah. Pretty traditional dab. No, that's going to be a quick kick. Dead giveaway. Well done. Browning rolls this one out of bounds at the one. Andre Bocelli down there to help him. On a 40 yard punt. To put Washington State at its own one yard line. And this is tough to do. You get a couple reps to do it in practice, but the coverage is the biggest key. But Shelly coming in big. How about them apples? Nice. Luke Falk under constant siege in this game so far. Already sacked three times. He's been hit three more times and hurried three others. And in this area of the field, it's going to be loud, so he's got to make sure he takes care of the football. Already thrown one interception so far tonight. Back to the one. Washington brings some heat. Falk throws underneath, and he's got a wide open Tavares Martin, Jr. His leading receiver on the season gets him some breathing room for the pickup at 22. This is pretty typical. You're going to see the motion man come across. You're going to see some guy come flat and a guy go deep. They try to manipulate each level of the defense to find someone open. And as a quarterback, you just read it bottom up. Short guy, middle guy, long guy. And in that case, we saw Martin be able to find the open space in the big game. Back-to-back 60-catch -back seasons for Tavares Martin. Junior from Belle Glade, Florida. Here's Renard Bell, the freshman, cuts it upfield. Into the arms of Ben Burkirvin on a gain of seven. This is a guy that Mike Leach and this Washington State staff really likes. Only 5'8", 160 pounds, but pretty talented. They called him the most improved player from a year ago, and typically it's talking about a guy saying that he wasn't that good, but no, they said he was very good. A couple good players playing in front of him, but he's just improved that much since last year. Empty set on second and short. Great coverage downfield again. Falk trying to find a window. Now he scrambles, needs the 32, and gets popped short by Keyshawn Bieria. The ball is out, and Washington has it. The second turnover forced by the Dogs' defense. And Keyshawn Bieria came out of nowhere to take a shot on Luke Falk. He just gets his right hand in there. He's able to rip it out before Falk is down. A costly turnover for Washington State. Something that, again, has plagued them for years in this rivalry. And it's really what the Huskies have fed off of. But Bieria, by the way, he was on, on all the way on the other side of the field. And as Falk started to redirect, the area came out of coverage and was able to find Falk before he was able to pick up the first down and get the ball out. It's the heart of that defense. Top leader on the roster, Keyshawn Bieria. Jars it out of there, and they go to the Wildcat on first down. 
Ahmed comes in motion and has room. Savan Ahmed cuts it upfield, down the sideline, and inside the five, it's first and goal. Ahmed like a bolt of lightning for 27. This is one of the things that you love from offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith. Little wrinkles in design, and it wasn't just the play to Ahmed. It's the fact that you had three running backs in the game all at the same time. Jake Browning was not in the game, so all of a sudden it makes it difficult then to adjust to what exactly Washington's trying to do. Browning's back in for first and goal with Gaskin. Double to tight ends now. Browning will sneak it. He's in. Touchdown, Washington. Promptly taking advantage of the takeaway. And this is just all about size and physicality as you see Washington. See how they gap down and it allows everyone to get good push. Utilizing the man next to you and you get a little extra help nowadays with Will Disley and Drew Sample. You can push a guy in now. It's 100% legal. A lot of teams use that to their advantage, in particular on the goal line on quarterback sneaks. Uh, just to be sure, was not legal about 12 years ago? Right? Yeah, not, not in 2005. Okay. Skano's extra point. Hooks through. Couple of Washington State turnovers. Couple of Washington touchdowns. 32 seconds it takes them to take advantage. Not often do you see this. This is during the timeout. Mike Leach pulled the entire team together and delivered a message. He's, they've got to snap out of it. I mean, we saw in the very first drive, the defense really struggling to get off the field and get any sort of stop. They weren't able to adjust in the last drive, giving up the big play to Ahmed to put them in position to score the touchdown. But offensively, it's been the turnovers. And, and we keep hammering and talking about it, but you can't play on the road in these sorts of conditions with this crowd and think you can turn the football over me you now minus two in the turnover margin and be able to get a win versus a Washington team that feeds off of that. And just trying to ruin your championship hopes. Trying to reach 10 wins for a second consecutive year. It'll be the first time since the early 90s that Washington could accomplish that. A short kick. James Williams. Shy of the 20. Washington State trying to get something going offensively. They hit the crosser to start the drive. Bernard Bell. And Bell's crunched after seven. Now, it may, may seem like a ridiculous notion to bring up if you haven't followed Washington State season closely. But twice this year, Mike Leach has pulled Luke Falk and inserted Tyler Holinsky. How soon do you think about that in this situation? I wouldn't right now. I think this could play out similar to the Arizona game where they basically pulled Falk about at the halftime for a two-minute drive and really Mike Leach just wanted to see or have Luke Falk see from a different perspective to see from the sideline he felt like he wasn't playing fast and Tyler Holinsky went in finished off the rest of that Arizona game uh, and really did a nice job but I don't know that that's your best bet of winning this game I think Luke Falk is the better of the two quarterbacks Isaiah Johnson Mack for the first down reception and for the record I think it's ridiculous that you pull the, the Pac-12's all-time leading passer no matter the reason, but they've done it twice this year. Here's Tay Martin. And Washington was all over this one. Miles Bryant, who's back at the nickel spot, he had to play corner for much of the season with the injuries they've had there. You've got to love how aggressive Washington is on the outside. Look at Bryant. He sees the screen. He ends up just committing to it right off the bat and makes the open field tackle. Something else that Washington doesn't get enough credit for because it's simple. They tackle well in space. You don't see many missed tackles from this Husky defense. Washington's been able to pressure with three and four all night. The crosser's Patman, and he's hit by JoJo McIntosh. JoJo McIntosh is the enforcer here for Washington. He kind of reminds me of Cam Chancellor for the Seattle Seahawks, and he was ejected last week's game in the first in the first half because of a targeting hit. And that one looks Boy. awfully close, and, and really the rule is you can't lead with the crown of your helmet. That's something he did a week ago. Almost similar there. Yeah, and it was added on in replay. And just so people understand, too, it doesn't matter if they're defenseless or not. You can't lead with the crown of your helmet, bottom line. They're down in short. Morrow gets swallowed up by Greg Gaines. Defense best 
second start of his career. The big fellow with a big stop. Well, and this is why Washington is so successful. They've only got three defensive linemen, and you got five offensive linemen, but they win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Greg Gaines, Vita Vea, Jalen Johnson, whoever else you want to throw into the conversation, their D-line gets it done. They allow the linebackers to flow free. They get penetration. They're so tough at the point of attack. So the punt team comes out. Eric Powell's been the star of this game for Washington State so far. 55-yarder and a 64-yarder to the one-yard line. This one crosses the field, and it's another good punt. Up out Eric Powell today, rolling inside the 10. With Aaron Fuller again watching it bounce. We happen to just be joining us. Dante Pettis left the game with an injury. 56 yarder that time. All about the Washington defense so far. The 110 Apple Cup. Jake Browning in the offense back at it with a 14 nothing lead. There's Washington State defense. It's been so good at forcing turnovers all year. A spot where they need to make a play quickly. Here they shut Gaskin down for a loss. Jihad Woods for the tackle. We check in with Bruce. Guys, you have a really banged up Washington sideline over here. You had LeVon Coleman go down. He's tried to make his knee go better, and it's not working. He's tried it three different ways on the bike. And then Dante Pettis came back from the locker room. He was just shaking his head. A lot of teammates coming over to console him. And they're sitting over there with Chico McClatcher, who's out for uh, who's been out for a while, and he's not going to play tonight. And that's another dynamic weapon they don't have. Yeah, went out with an ankle injury week four, of course. The huge one is the left tackle, Trey Adams. We did knock down with an injury. Perfectly done by Jake Browning. By Andre Bocelli, who finds an unsuspecting spectator down there. Knocked it a bounds, a first down. So good. Just so good. Watch the timing of this. Bocelli is rounding. The ball's already out into the outside, which is the biggest key of any timing route when it's out, an outside breaking route. Away from the defender, there's really no opportunity for a quarterback to make a play on the football when you have that sort of timing and that sort of placement. Well, Bocelli had some big catches in that comeback win last week. Had a fourth down catch to keep their hopes alive. And a 31 yarder to set up the game winning field goal. With a head of steam, it's Gaskin into the secondary. Miles Gaskin into Washington State territory. I mean, look at this hole on the left side of the offensive line. Watch the movement. Once he hits, there's just a clear hole, and he was obviously good enough to see the backside cut, but there's no Washington State defender. I mean, look at that. There's no Washington State defender at the second level anywhere close to Gaskin. And, and this is the trouble that you find yourself in when you have to go up against teams that use two tight end sets and three tight end sets. It forces you to have to account for an additional gap up front in the run game. And right now, Washington State, they're not putting enough bodies down around the line of scrimmage. They pound away again. Gaskin shifting his way, spinning his way. First down inside the 25. Washington already has more rushing yards than Washington State allows on average. And he's obviously a small back, which means, look at this, oh. the shiftiness and his cutting ability, then the spin move just to evade Isaac Dotson and continue to get additional yards. A third of his yards have actually come after first contact. I mean, for a guy who stands at only 5'10", 190 pounds, he's not very big, but it's incredibly low to the ground. He's tough to stop. First down and goal. Here's Gaskin. Patience to let the hole to develop. Strength to drive his way inside the five. Second and goal. And you said it. He had to be patient because Washington State decided to bring a pressure. He brought both linebackers, and he had to wait until the hold declared before he accelerated through it. I don't wonder at some point, if you don't throw Jake Browning an opportunity to have a little play action pass as well as you're running the football, it doesn't ever hurt to mix that in every once in a while. Instead, they keep it on the ground, and why not? Gaskin plunges his way in for the second time tonight. Washington's opened up a three-score lead. And look at the movement on the left side of this offensive line. They just wash everyone down, and Gaskin follows his lead blockers, in particular his tight end, Will Disley. 
Started out as a defensive lineman. He then transitioned to playing tight end. And he's done a tremendous job of stepping up, both in the run blocking, even as a pass catching tight end at times for Washington. Twenty-one nothing, Washington. There's a different shade of red down in Palo Alto, enjoying this one. Back in Seattle, Washington all over Washington State. They marched down the field largely on the run. 93 yards on nine plays, seven of them on the ground. Averaging eight yards per carry. Just dominant performance so far by the Washington rushing attack, and in particular, that O-line. Therrington and Renard Bell back to return Vizcano's kick. It's Bell. The flag flies in. And you can see Mike Leach is upset with his quarterback, and rightfully so. He's going to have to make more throws in tight windows. A three-man rush gets to him. He was popped as he let it go. Vita Vea just blew things up. And for that very reason, Washington's getting pressure with three and four man rushes, meaning you've gonna, you're going to have to throw the football in tight windows because there's eight in coverage. You've only got five eligible receivers able to out in your routes. I mean, it's impossible. You get a three man rush with that kind of pressure and eight men in coverage. You've got to find the pockets in the zone coverage at times. And you're going to have to take advantage of the short throws and incrementally work your way down the field. And Luke Falk's going to have to use his legs at some point. Falk again in trouble. And ripped down. They spot him at the one. Benning Potolani gets involved in the action. At the two-yard line. And Third the key is going to be where his forward progress was stopped. And they've got him about the one and a half yard line. But and there's not much you can say at this point. You've got to try to win those battles up front. Vita Vea is doing a good job of forcing Luke Falk to either have to move in the pocket or deal with the constant pressure. One thing you got to look at it. Did Luke Falk hold on to this football? And it looks like his forward progress was stopped around the one. Third and 17, and again they bring three. Falk off his back foot, throws it out of bounds. And with the rain falling in Seattle, Luke Falk is living a nightmare right now. And he took an absolute shot from Vita Vea. And they had an eligible wide receiver in the vicinity, otherwise that potentially could have been intentional grounding, which would have ended up being a safety. And he just got nowhere to go. That's 340 pounds in your face. No thanks. Fuller to return this punt. Kyle Sweet will send it away. Receiver for Washington State also handles some of the punt duties. And good coverage. Second tackle from Kyle Selleck. Washington State's going to need a monster comeback to make its first trip. There's still have plenty of time, but they've got to find a way of getting a stop versus this Washington offense. Play action on first down. Browning rolls and throws to the sideline for Ty Jones. His second catch goes for a dozen and a first down. Only his fifth reception on the season, the true freshman out of Provo, Utah. The key here is he comes back to the football. He puts his foot in the ground, gets separation from Harper, and an accurate throw by Browning as Browning leaves the field and once again, you're going to see Washington go to this wildcat package with Miles Gaskin. He's the featured quarterback, if you will, and three running backs in the game. It's Gaskin. Stuck his nose down, stayed on his feet somehow to get a short game. Good adjustment by the Washington State defense. We saw how that personnel grouping really plagued them with the big game by Ahmed earlier on the jet sweep. That time they weren't fooled by the motion. Stayed at home to set an edge on Gaskin. Ahmed. Pitch. 
dots the hole hard, and Ahmed close to a first down. As it dots him with a tackle. This is last play. What do you do with your chain when it comes off mid game? What else are you gonna put it? You gotta put it in your sock, man. Yeah. It's the only safe spot for it. Pull it up. Problem is, as much as he's been running the football tonight, probably not too safe. So he got a breather and he, and he made sure that chain is safe. Uh-huh. Washington State will have the ball to open the second half, trying to gather some momentum here, getting a stop in a short field. Browning looking left, throwing incomplete behind Bocelli. From here it would be a 44-yarder for Tristan Vizcano. And he started out of the field, then they pulled him back, and now they'll send him out. He's had somewhat of a roller coaster year. Obviously the game winner last week, but inconsistent to say the least this year. Yeah, he was benched at one point after a one for six stretch. And as a high schooler, he hit a 57 yarder at one point. This Kano from 44. It is right down the middle. And with the exception of one drive, Washington has continued to find points every time they've gotten the football. The Huskies all over the Cougars trying to reach 10 wins for the second year in a row. Trying to spoil Washington State's championship hopes. Out of my kill in Los Angeles, the State Farm Halftime Show. The 110th Apple Cup. Washington and Washington State, all Huskies in that first half. We get ready to start the second half. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce will be with us again in a moment. I mean, that was in every phase a thorough beatdown. Yeah, I mean, look, football games are won and lost at the line of scrimmage. And, and that's what we're seeing right now from Washington. They're winning the battle up front offensively, rushed for almost 200 yards in the first half. Washington State cannot stop them, and they can't get off the field. And then on the flip side, defensively, Washington has been unbelievably tough up front. And it's been the pressure they've been able to get with their front three, front four, and also the coverage downfield. Well, Washington State will have it to begin the second half. Looking for a monster comeback. To get to the Pac-12 championship game. Otherwise, it'd be Stanford to take on USC on Friday night from Santa Clara. Keith Harrington has his hands on it and chopped down to the 25-yard line. Take a look at our Geico first half stats. Here is proof of what we're talking about. Washington State minus 25 on the ground. And this is not your typical Washington State defense where you know, normally giving up 181 on the ground and a half wouldn't be a big deal. They're really good stopping the run traditionally this year. Yeah, and, and really the other thing is getting turnovers and then turning those into points. And, and that's more been the story of tonight's game so far with Washington, not Washington State. So how does Washington State get it going offensively? Pac-12's all-time leading passer, Luke Falk, 12 of 19 with those two interceptions. And against a three-man rush like they saw much of the first half, they complete it to Tavares Martin Jr. And we go down to Bruce Feldman. Joe, Mike Leach's diagnosis of that first half, our guys are just trying to do too much, and we're trying to make all these special plays. I had asked him, I said, do you think you guys are at all intimidated by these guys? He goes, I, I don't really think so, but we got to find a way to get these blo guys blocked, especially that number 50. He's killing us. That would be Vea. Bernard Bell, the motion man. They bring an extra man this time, and Luke Falk takes off. They'll spot him where he began the slide, which is right at the marker. That's something that Luke Falk's going to have to do a lot of in this second half because Washington State doesn't have much of a running game as good as Washington's been up front and stopping the run. And you're at a deficit now where you've got to throw the football. So when they do have an opportunity, when he has an opportunity to find a rush lane and pick up additional yards, he's going to have to do that. They throw the bubble. Kyle Sweet not going to get it. Ball comes out. They say that it's a completion and a fumble that Washington State recovers. Sweet gets on top of the ball that he coughed up. Washington State tries to utilize a wide receiver screen. You're going to see the recognition up here. And look how you see Byron Murphy redirect, get to the football. That's football instincts. Doesn't get much better than that. And the thing that you're seeing is Washington didn't have the numbers. There was only two defenders out there. They had the opportunity to complete the wide receiver screen. 
for a decent game, but Murphy they just won the one-on-one -on -one battle in the open field. That's been a story of tonight's game. So that overturn call lines up looming large as they have to punt it away. And Fuller with a fair catch on the line drive. So Washington will have it for their first drive of the second half from the 33-yard line after this. Bocelli headed around the left side. Thompson grabs a hold of him, and it's second down. That's a good open field tackle by Jalen Thompson. Because if he didn't stop Bocelli, there's a lot of room to run. Thompson's a good player. Started every game since arriving. Sophomore out of Downey, California, was a freshman All-American last year. And their leading tackler here is a sophomore. Him and Robert Taylor really play well off of one another. A couple times this season, both have had interceptions in games. Here's a trick play out of the Wildcat. Washington State has it snuffed out. He still gets rid of it. This is Kamari Pleasant hurdling his way to the 21. Wow. 20 yards. Browning somehow got it off. Well, they were trying to work the ball to Will Disley. The senior out of Bozeman, Montana, and you'll see. Look how he works up the field. He's got him, but he's got to move because of the pressure. He tries to set his feet again, but once again, Houdini's and finds his way to flip the ball to Pleasant. I mean, an unbelievable job by Jake Browning just to make something out of nothing. Gaskin. Yeah, By the way, how many times do you see what is almost back-to-back -back plays with a shovel pass as things are getting a little chippy down there in the field? Flag just flew. It's typically what happens when you've got a rivalry game and one side's extremely frustrated. And this it almost looked like Dotson punched someone. You see on the left side of your screen, right Ooh. there. The kid is going to get ejected for that. And look, he's probably there trying to no plead his case. Play. Second down. He's no probably foul. trying to plead his case. He was going for the football because that was the arm Gaskin had in his left arm, but there's no need for that. That was long after the play was dead. And if they had determined that that was a malicious punch, it would have been grounds for ejection. They just showed it on the video board here. And it's hard to tell, but you can see he's, he's trying to go after the football. And this is what desperation looks like when you're down. And you're trying to do all you can just to get a turnover and make something happen. Second down nine. They give it back to Gaskin, who's met in the hole this time. Justice Rogers. Any more time at linebacker with Jihad Woods banged up. Third down. Rogers, who came in for Isaac Dotson. And Dotson missed some time earlier this year. Rogers played pretty well. I mean, you had three, three freshmen almost at times playing the linebacker position, doing a pretty darn good job for Washington State. Supposed to be a veteran group. Had three senior starters there to begin the year, but as you mentioned earlier, Peyton Polar, Nate DeRider, Isaac Dotson, all injuries at some point. Here's Fuller. Not a whole lot there. It'll be fourth down. You gotta love the fact that Washington State's rallying to the football. There's still a ton of effort. They understand there's plenty of time left in this football game, and as lopsided as it's looked, their offense has the firepower to be able to come back and make plays in the passing game, although the way this game is gone, I have a hard time believing that tonight. Field goal team comes out. Tristan Viscano hit a career-long 44-yarder his last time, and it seems like he's really feeling good about himself right now. The game winner last week. He struggled from the right hash though this season. This is where the majority of misses has come. Thirty-four. He's two for two today. All Huskies in this one. They extend the lead to twenty-seven nothing over their in-state rival.
season full of dominant performances. They got a signature one going here. Shutting Washington State out through two plus quarters. Taken down to the 22 yard line by Zeke Turner. Here's Morrow. Jamal Morrow, tackled by Ben Burr Kirby. Mentioned it earlier when you look at the recipe for success versus Washington State. Chris Peterson's defense has had so much success. And you look at some of the relations back to other teams this year that have had success versus Washington State. Justin Wilcox, who spent some time at Boise State. Marcel Yates, defensive coordinator at Arizona, who spent some time at Boise State. And the common denominator is the way they mix some things up up front, the way they mix coverages, playing a little bit more split safety looks at times. Here comes Morrill with a head of steam, clipped down by Austin Joyner. Talking about Chris Peterson coaching tree, guys that spent some time with him at Boise State, the success they've had against his Washington State offense this year. And for Chris Peterson, really, his entire time as head coach here. And it's those roots stemming back to Boise, but it's it's really been the different things they do up front, whether it's with their pass rush or their coverage on the back end, the mixture of coverages, the things they try to do to disguise and confuse Luke Falk after the snap of the football. Cougars yet to convert a third down today, facing a four-man rush. Falk over the middle gets picked off. It's Ben Burr Kirvin. Third interception of the day for Washington. This has happened on every interception so far today. Luke Falk's just not seeing the defense. I mean, Ben Burkirvin was looking up this route the entire time. Watch his eyes as he drops into coverage. He sees it coming the whole way. Luke Falk starts to stare down sweet and he's thrown off his back foot he doesn't have much on the football anyway which makes it a very easy interception for Berker but you didn't see him well, that's the problem when you talk about how you go about reading defenses and your progressions all the things you talk about in the quarterback room when you read a defense you're, you're looking at defenders these are all pure progression reads for Washington State Gaskin on first down, short game. And what that means is you're basically looking one, two, three, four, five. You're going through all the different receivers or potential receivers in the routes. And because of that, you're not so focused on the defense. But that's when you lose sight of where certain players are, especially when a defense moves at the snap of the football, like Washington did on that on a couple plays ago. And Luke Falk's career now in the Apple Cup, which is three games long. He missed one game with a concussion. Three touchdowns and eight interceptions. Gaskin makes one man miss. Accelerates. Miles Gaskin leaping for the end zone. His third touchdown of the day. And the route is on in the Apple Cup. I mean, this is the last spot you want to be in. If you're a defender in space, like Sean Harper was one-on-one, -on -one, it's tough to even get a hand on Miles Gaskin. And look at the balance and the ability to stay in bounds and leap for the pylon. I mentioned earlier tonight's broadcast, and the two losses Washington's had this season, Jake Browning didn't throw a touchdown pass. Now, they beat UCLA, and he didn't throw a touchdown pass in that game, but they rushed for 333 yards and five touchdowns, which is looking very similar to how tonight's yeah. game. Second week in a row with the three touchdowns for Gaskin, running his school record total of 42. An extra point is just barely through. 34-0, Washington in front. The defending Pac-12 champs ruining Washington State's chance at getting a crown of their own. But if Ohio State was to beat Wisconsin as a two-loss champion, we saw Penn State get leapfrogged last year as a Big Ten champion, even though they beat Ohio State head-to-head -head and won the division. Things could get interesting, and obviously with Alabama losing today, or if they have a shot at getting in. Want to go to Dallas-Fort Worth for the Big 12 championship? 
sounds fun. All right, Bernard Bell tackled at the 20. The Washington State's got one of the biggest offensive lines in the Pac-12. Ball called day this time. And finds a man, but it's jarred out of there. Wow. Byron Murphy absolutely punishes Isaiah Johnson Mack. My goodness. He's not very big. He's only 5'11", 175 pounds, but he can move. Take a listen. And that is perfectly legal. He hit within the strike zone, led with the shoulder, not with the helmet. Well done by Byron Murphy. Freshman who had two interceptions in his debut game against Rutgers, but then broke his foot and missed two months. Now his second game back. Watching him come back, that young man's a difference maker. Paul Keevan one into one-on-one -on -one coverage. Desmond Patman makes a nice catch, gets a foot down. Take an advantage of that 6-4 length. And this is really the mismatch I was kind of looking for all game long from Washington State, but they haven't taken many opportunities to just throw up jump balls. They've got multiple wide receivers who are 6-3 or taller, whether it's Isaiah Johnson, Mack, Tavarius Martin. We saw Pittman, I mean, excuse me, Patman. I mean, they've got a number of guys who are at least four inches taller than the quarterbacks they're working against. Morrill out of the backfield. Jamal Morrill cuts it upfield for a first down. Just going back to Vita Vea, you know, one of the things that I think last year when you watched him a little bit, he wasn't in an as good condition or shape, so in late in games, you didn't see him have the same type of impact that we've seen him have here coming into the third quarter. That's been one of the biggest differences. You see him watching the fourth quarter, Vita Vea is still impacting games, still getting penetration. Open the fourth quarter. In Washington territory, Falk steps into one to the sideline in the air and incomplete. Joined of the coverage. Tavares Martin Jr., the intended receiver. The toughest thing for Luke Falk with what this Washington defense has done in their secondary is they're mixing up their looks. And at the snap of the football, you're either going to safety running down to create a single high safety look, or you'll get both safeties sitting in the back. And then sometimes they move where they'll shift to one side of the field and play more of a zone coverage with two defenders to the outside. So that disguise, that mix, I think it's confused Falk at times. Able to get this one off, finding Morrill for a first down across the 30. And that's the weak portion of the field when you play a too high split safety coverage. It's the middle of the field, this void. And if you could find a way of free releasing a running back, it forces those linebackers to have to play in coverage. I don't know how Falk sneaked that ball in there. Six time he's found more tonight. That leads the Cougars. And the 28, first and 10. They shovel it off again tomorrow. The area of the stop after eight or nine. If you're a Washington State fan, where was this in the beginning of the game? How about that? Last time they shut out 2010 before Mike Leach arrived. At this point, you figure you're probably four down territory everywhere now, given the point in the game. On second and short, fall pressured again with only a three-man rush. And you can just see how miserable that looks to have to live. You're Luke Falk, eight pen in coverage, and you're still running for your life. You talked about Jamal Mora leading them in receptions with seven so far tonight. He's had, what, three on this drive? And they were actually trying to target him once again, working on Ben Burkirvin. But Mora couldn't get open, and the pressure eventually forced him to throw the football away. You know, at some point, third and short, given that you've only got five men in the box, why not run the football, pick up the first down, and then look to try to score after that. Negative 31 rushing time. A lot of those the five sacks. They've only run it one time in the second half, and it remains that way as Renard Bell has a first down. 
Bell, one of the more promising wide receivers of this Washington State group, the redshirt freshman. Talk about they love his attitude, love his demeanor, the way he practices and approaches the game. It's, it's a little hobble. He's only five foot eight, 165 pounds. So he plays bigger than that. Then with Jameer Calvin, similar size. Both out of Cathedral High in Los Angeles. Ball chase from behind across his body has Tavares Martin Jr. again and Ben Burkirvan racking up the tackles. Washington State loves these crossing routes in this portion of the field. And eventually what you're going to see is they're going to run some sort of concept with the two post routes. Probably shift out of this. Looking for that void in the middle of the field. And they find it was sweet. First and goal, Washington State. Someone's like to flip it and run it again. Here's Morrow. Not a whole lot of room in there. Surrounded by purple shirts, the ball came out, but it was blown dead. And it's second down. He's really hoping for a shutout. This is that area where you'd think that size advantage, if they can throw the football up for a fade, would come into play for Washington State. Isaiah Johnson Mack who has four inches on Byron Murphy. Second and goal back to Morrow and he's in for the touchdown. So the Cougars finally on the board here in the fourth. Really the key was the way they spread the field there. You talked about Isaiah Johnson Mack. They had a two by two set with both sets of wide receivers extremely wide forcing Washington to have to declare how they wanted to play their defense, how many guys they wanted to put around the line of scrimmage to stop the run. Washington State had the numbers. We'll finally find a seam in that Washington State, or that Washington defense, excuse me. Punch it in on the 15th play of the drive. And Powell had the extra point. And it's 34-7. We talked about the playoff picture. The other thing that's developing as we move into December is the coaching carousel. Bruce Feldman will give us some details when we come back. There are some big time openings across college football, aren't there, Bruce Feldman? That's right, Joe, especially in the SEC. Keep an eye on Arkansas if you're a Washington State fan. I was told on Friday by a source that if Auburn ended up winning this weekend against Alabama, which obviously they did, that might take Gus Malzahn out of the mix for the for the Arkansas vacancy. And here's where it gets interesting. I'm told some Razorback influential boosters are very intrigued by Mike Leach and may try to come after him. He also potentially could be in play for Nebraska, where Bill Moose his old boss, who was the AD for the Cougars, is now in Lincoln. The question, though, is would Leach actually leave? I know he really likes it in Pullman. His family's happy there, and he's obviously built this. But if Arkansas comes coming or Nebraska, would he be able to say no? Onside kick recovered by Ty Jones. And, and the other part of that is, you know, you're, you're changing your program the way it looks, at least offensively, in a dynamic fashion, right? I mean, Arkansas has been known for running the football. They've been able to throw the football and air it out a little bit, but I mean, Brett Bielema, former offensive lineman, he's, he likes to run the football. That's a complete identity change if you're Arkansas. As you look at what Mike Leach has been able to do for his time at Washington State. They were 9 and 40, four seasons before he arrived. I'll turn this program around. First down run for Gaskin accelerates for a nice pickup. So uh, not that surprising to see Mike Leach attach to some openings. But Bruce, what is this about Chris Peterson perhaps being a candidate at Tennessee? Joe, I think it's so far fetched. Now I was told that Tennessee has interest in him. I don't doubt that. This guy's a great coach. You see what he's doing this year, and like he's got a bunch of really good offensive players who are sidelined and injured. Injured. 
I just couldn't see Chris Peterson, who didn't want to be in the USC fishbowl, going into the biggest fishbowl maybe in the SEC, and it's like kind of a crazy job in Knoxville. What, would he really, with his personality, want to be a part of that? I don't even, even if they were to throw a ton of money, I just don't see Chris Peterson wanting to be part of that. It was a pretty darn good situation he's got here. Miles Gaskin into the clear. Gaskin inside the 10, inside the five, first and goal. I mean, it's just incredible. Not only won the job that the offensive line does up front, creating holes. I mean, look, Gaskin's got the vision. He's got the gas once he steps on the pedal. But watch him just carry a defender an additional, what, 10 yards? You can't say enough about how consistent he's been since he's gotten to Washington. He's averaged 100 yards in every game of his career. And you put it all together. In the last five games, four of them he's rushed for over 100 yards. The one game he didn't, he caught for over 100 yards in the passing game. How about a four touchdown day? Emblematic of how this day has gone. Untouched into the end zone for Miles Gaskin. And safety, Jalen Thompson was the free defender. And after one cut, that's all it took for Gaskin to get in the end zone. What a day. Oh. And they don't say these dogs will hunt. You've been working on that one for a good chunk of the week. It's hunting yeah. season. Right. You had going to break earlier. How about them apples? Uh, Monday, Tuesday. When, when did you start? Plan of that one. It just came to me in the moment. <laughs> of course it did. Uh, oh, Washington. Gaskins fourth touchdown. All Huskies in the 110th Apple Cup. How about that fake apple? The air apple? Uh huh. Classic. I only break it out once a year. What kind? What's your favorite apple? It's a Fiji. I think it's a Fiji. Really? That's your yeah. favorite? I like the grannies too, though. Those are good. Honey crisp all day. Wow. Pretty specific. Had one last night and then Rome. Bernard Bell. Crosses the 25 yard line. Time His 10th catch, but not much. This is obviously going to take some of the sting a little bit off from this performance if Washington State can continue to drive, get points, make it statistically look a little better in the box score. But for Luke Falk, I mean, clearly disappointment. I mean, this is played for Washington State for a while. This is his first time playing Seattle in the Apple Cup because he sat out a couple years ago when we were here and watched Peyton Bender end up starting for the Cougars. And it's going to remain that for him and the seniors, Washington will be the only team that they fail to beat in their time in Pullman. Snuck that one in there, and they say that Patman got a foot down. That's a catch. And a first down. Incredible footwork by Patman. Watch as he is able to bring in the catch, but see how he picks his left leg up and drags the right. I mean, that is textbook. And, it, and you'd think that you wouldn't want to lift that left leg up like that and extend out of bounds. What it forces you to do, because you're kind of off balance, is put your right leg on the ground to be able to drag it, because you're kind of off balance. Hit as he throws. Vita Vea almost had an interception. It was Keyshawn Bieria that got a hold of Falk as he tried to let it go. It's been the story of the night. Keyshawn Bieria adds to the pressure. He's actually looking to try to cover the back, and once he had a free rush, and he saw Falk wasn't going to him, he said, figured, why not? I'll just try to go get a sack and disrupt the pass play. Well, how's Luke Falk going to feel tomorrow morning? Sore. Oh. And probably angry, and when you think about his journey and how he got to Washington State, the guy was a walk-on when he first got there. He ended up moving to California, going to L.A. for high school for a certain portion. When he came back, to Logan, Utah, he ended up having to sit out a year because he was considered ineligible. And Williams has a first down on a little shovel pass. Forced him to be off the radar for a lot of schools out there. Had a phenomenal senior year. 
Logan High School. Kind of felt like Pullman reminded him of, of Logan, of his hometown. Felt like it was a better fit. And what he got here is the sixth stringer, which stood out right away for his work ethic, moved up the depth chart. As a redshirt freshman, he was Connor Halliday's backup and started the final few games when Halliday was hurt. Good feel to evade the rush this time and slides down after a short game. First full year as a starter in 2015, he was the nation's leading passer. And again last year, similar numbers, 4,500 yards, 38 touchdowns. And he's capping it all off as the Pac-12's all-time leader in just about every major passing category. The ones you want. Yeah, you know. right. <laughs> I think the next question is going to be, you know, how does he compare or translate to the NFL? Yep. We haven't seen many quarterbacks from Mike Leach's system be able to play well, play at a high level once they get to the NFL. And I think the biggest thing is, as we look at his Pac-12 records entering today, he's only going to build upon that between tonight and the bowl game. But I think the, the biggest difference is you see that style of offense that they run and it, it's just not as conducive to the NFL level where you have this personnel grouping as you're moving in and out even though you're in shotgun more now so than ever in the NFL you still got to be able to play under center utilize the play action pass turn your back to the defense turn back around and identify coverage and there's a lot more on your plate than what he's asked to do at Washington State and that's going to be the adjustment Tim, uh, great catch by Tim Martin and he's in for a touchdown there is a flag down. And that's something that NFL evaluators are going to love about Luke Falk. Is his ability to make those sorts of throws. Holding on an eligible receiver. Defense number 10. The penalties declined. Touchdown. So Martin's in the end zone, and Falk has his first touchdown throw of the day. Talked about his touch. Watch him as he gets the football. He looks off to his right, and he just comes right back to Martin. Martin. The ability to adjust and they're really high on this true freshman they really feel like he can end up being the best wide receiver of this group in the future when you look at his skill set his size 6 385 pounds is a terrific basketball player in high school and they feel like that really translates to his ability to run routes and get open in this offense and a home on louisiana you mentioned the basketball ability the initial plan was that he'd go to tulane and play both Washington State came out and offered, and he's put together a nice freshman season for him. If they're just working hard, maybe not quite as good. Right? Gotta have that play hard in there, too. Gotta balance. Play for the time. Miles Gaskin will take a knee. KJ Carter Samuels replaces Jake Brown in a quarterback. Junior from Saratoga, California. Gives it off to Ralph Kinney on first down, and he's got a nice run. This is obviously a great moment for a guy who's a senior on his fourth carry of the season, but from Shelton, Washington. And it's that fun part when you're a part of a blowout win in a rivalry game, your last home game if you're a senior. With an opportunity to get some playing time for some guys that work so hard to a lot of times service the scout team, put on good looks throughout the course of the year. And, this is one of those rewards, finally getting on the field and your family and friends one last time. Part of another Washington blowout in the Apple Cup. 41-14 here after a 45-17 win last year. 45-10 two years ago. Kenny again lowers the shoulder. Stopped by Dylan Sherman. Kenny again. The third down. You and Bruce have kind of settled on three finalists, though, at this point. Yeah, I mean, look, bottom line, Baker Mayfield's played the best football at the most important position. And I don't foresee him not hoisting up that trophy when it's all said and done. By talking about Bryce Love, leads the country in rushing yards per game. And then Bruce's favorite, Saquon Barkley, who he's been phenomenal at times, but probably not consistent enough. What say you, Bruce? Brady, I'm ready to vote for Vita Vea after tonight. <laughs> 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 no, it's Baker's running away. The only guy who might have had a shot would be Carry on Johnson just because he's got a big game in the SEC title. At least he can get to New York. Beyond that, I'm not sure anyone's touching Baker. 
Yeah, you wonder if he hadn't split carries at time. I know Petaway, you know, he's injured, but he kind of split some carries. Maybe if that will allow him to have more production earlier this season. Maybe if Carrion Johnson would be in the conversation a little bit more. He's been the best running back this season, in my opinion, in the SEC. What is with Washington State taking these timeouts here, using all three of their timeouts to force the punt? Joe Whitford's punt. Makes a good bounce for Washington. Down to the six yard line. What a job Chris Peterson's done. Um, you think about since he got here in Washington, he's kind of transformed this program. It's no surprise other schools would want to try to lure him away. When we talked earlier about Tennessee potentially looking at him as becoming their head coach because he provides stability. And the guy's a winner. He's done it at Boise, he's done it at Washington. got a chance in the bowl game now with a win to have his eighth 11 win season in 12 years as a head coach he's done at different conferences too and I can't explain how hard that is to people because you're recruiting versus different teams you're playing versus different schemes and talent and he's done it in multiple ways and there's something to be said for that um, he's got a good thing going here in Washington See a number of guys in the Pac-12 kind of stayed put. David Shaw as well. Yeah. The job he's done at Stanford. He started out originally in the NFL and then essentially looked at people talk about maybe one day he'd make that transition, but he doesn't see a need to. Falk over the middle. That's Dave Martin. Chris Peterson, a coach's son, but he said he had no plans on being a coach when he was growing up. Wanted to be a psychologist. Studied that in college at UC Irvine. Uh, wound up a coach. Third down three and Falk with Martin going up to grab it. You've seen some flashes here in the closing minutes. Why they're so high on this freshman. Has natural skills that you know translate from the basketball court to playing wide receiver. You see, they're going up high, pointing the football. It's got good hand eye coordination, but it's, it's really the ability to feel a defender when he turns his hips and how to get open and when to get open. Like right there. Martin again. That's why I always wish more kids played multiple sports because they do kind of play hand in hand. And him understanding zone defense versus man-to-man -man defense in basketball translates onto the football field as far as how he gets open versus man-to-man -man defense and press coverage versus zone coverage. He's got a fuel for all that because of that background playing basketball. Here's Patman. And that will do it. All Washington. And I said UC Irvine. UC Davis product. Chris Peterson unbeaten in Apple Cups and Washington has won five in a row in this series eight of the last nine and with the win Stanford will represent the North against USC in the Pac-12 championship on Friday. Bruce Feldman has coach Peterson. Coach, since Mike Leach has got rolling in Pullman, nobody has been able to dominate him consistently like you guys have. What have you guys been able to do that no one else in the Pac-12 have? Yeah, it's a, I don't know. The kids play hard. We got turnovers. We can run the ball a little bit. You know, those are always a good recipe for success. It's a top 15 defense you face tonight. You run for over 300 yards without LeVon for most of the game. Miles ran wild. What impresses you the most about Miles? Yeah, he's a heck of a player. I mean, if he's, uh, you know, you give him a crease, he's going to find it. And he's really, really strong. And he's deceptively fast. I mean, he, he does all those things. He's a heck of a player. We saw LeVon at the end of the night in a walking boot. Uh, Dante Pettis was also sidelined. What can you tell us about their status going forward? I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be okay. They got ankle sprains, and we got some time to get healed up. So hopefully we get them back. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, coach.
41-14, the final score. Thanks for joining us. So long from Seattle.